Okay, so I want to do a real quick video detailing how to kind of archive all the files that are needed for submission of the projects. It's going to be very, very quick, very short. Uh, I will have one additional note towards the end along with two notes if you're on Windows and Mac OS. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and hop over on and figure out what we're doing. So I have a bit of a file explorer here, a print giant zoomed in uh, <laughs> files just so you can kind of see these are green directories. So this is going to be the actual Nantetris directory that has all my project folders, uh, tools and stuff in it. And then we have this Nandazip folder, which is some software that I wrote. It's in Python, but it's using Nuitka to compile it down to C code. So there are actually individual operating system specific binaries available. So if you run it on Linux, you can actually run it through a native C uh, executable. And same for uh, Windows and Mac OS. They are specific to each operating system. Now with the binaries, specifically on Windows and on Mac OS, if you run them, they are not signed. So it is going to freak out and give you a security warning. That is okay. There is no malware. I wrote it. I promise there's no malware. You can actually use something I'm going to touch on in a second to see all the source code. Not a big deal. But uh, if it shows on Windows and it's like a blue box that says, hey, we can't run this, and should have something that says more info, you click on that and go down and say run anyway, should be good. For Mac OS, uh, if you try and click on it and it doesn't run, right click or double click on it uh, and you'll see open in the context menu click that and it should bypass the security issue shouldn't be too much of an issue however I do have a workaround if you can't get either one to work but before we do that I want to show you how this works so and is up here one for my Linux binary and then one for the Python binary this is what I'm going to show in just a bit but for now I want to do this. Right click here, you can see I have an sh file, a disk file. This is going to be consistent on Mac OS and Windows. However, the only thing that's going to be different for Windows is instead of a .sh file here, you're going to have a .bat. Do not touch the disk file. Please don't do it. Just, you have a bad time. Trust me. And here I'm going to, real quick, increase the font size real quick. Um, I want to do real quick and to zip.sh it's going to run the shell script which will launch the binary which will open a application like this you can see load project over here a giant pane that says please select a project directory and a grayed out save archive so I'm going to load project directory uh, I'm going to navigate to my and the Tetris folder where my projects are and this is where you actually select the projects so you see I have 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 you want to select or highlight the numbered directory here so project 1 project 2 project 3 so on and so forth and once you do you just single click highlight it and then you would hit choose down here. Now what you don't want to do very specifically is say it's not going to be too big of an issue with project one. If you double click project one, there's nothing to choose. There's not an issue here because there's no subdirectories. However, if you go to something like project four, where we have multiple subdirectories, you'll have an issue where you might actually click add or double or loop or neg. Yet you don't want these. If you choose the root directory of the project is going to do this where one sec we now have a comprehensive list of all the files in the folders so if you take a look at it you can see that I have all of my CMP HDL out and TST files for everything and over here on the right you'll see that it has a lot less files because it doesn't have any out files. So it curates all the appropriate files that are needed for submission as opposed to trying and sending everything all at once. 
So once you have this, we'll just come over here and we'll do save archive. And it's gonna save this 01.nanzip. I'm just gonna save it here in my projects folder. I don't feel like finding somewhere else new. I'm gonna exit out. Oops, my bad. Ah. Uh, let's go back over here to this folder here. Project, and now you can see I have the 01.nanzip. Now, real quick, gonna delete that and show what happens if you can't get any of the binaries to work. I'm going to right click on nanzip minus python. I'm going to extract it. And you see we have this folder here. And it contains a PNG of the icon that I made, the nanzip.py, and then a UI nanzip.py. So these two folders in conjunction are all the software is. Now what's in the binary is just a compiled version of it. So I'm gonna open my terminal here kind of increase here. I'm going to run python dot slash nanzip.py. So it's going to use my installed version of Python to run nanzip.py. Now, to note, it does need Python 3 specifically. So if you need to use Python 3 to run it, use that. If you need Py to run it, use that. Just whatever you can get to use Python 3 to execute this will give you the exact same window. So we'll load the project just the same way. Come up here to Nanda Tetris projects. Um, choose this exact same setup and situation. Save it. Zero one and zip. We exit out. We go back over here and exact same situation. So if you're having an issue running the binary, you can download the Python version instead since you should have Python installed in your system and you can run it that way. Now, as long as you can get some version of the Nanda zip software working, as an IRP zip binary version, the Python version, just be careful to specifically use the subdirectory of each project being the numerical name. So if you're on project two, it's gonna be zero two, so on and so forth, just like this is zero one, this is zero two, zero three, so on and so forth. Each one will correspond to the correct project directory. Do not use the subdirectories inside of them. That's just full warning for later on. It'll probably happen, and if it does, that's okay. But ideally, that won't happen. So if you have any questions on it, please just let me know. I know I wrote the software, and it's just kind of a stepping stone to stuff I want to do in the future, but it's just kind of what I have for now. So if you have any issues with it, just let me know. Also, one thing to note, two main situations pop up where you cannot run the binary, and that is if you're on Linux, using an older version of glibc. Uh, that will happen if you're running, say, Debian, or an older version of Ubuntu. I can go in and compile the code down in an older version of Linux, and that should do the trick. And pretty much the same thing for Mac OS. I think I compiled this on one of the later two versions of it. So if you're on, say, a pretty out of date version like Big Sur, or Catalina or something like that, it may not work. And if that happens, just for either one, just use the Python version and it should work no problem. All right, so hopefully that explains everything. And if you have any questions again, just let me know. Alright, see you guys in the next video. Adios.